One of the biggest talking points surrounding Tears of the Kingdom has to do with the fact that the game might not look that technically impressive. It looks too much like Breath of the Wild, as in they didn't improve the visuals enough going from a Wii U game to a Switch game. And there's a lot of factors at play with visual presentation, especially in a compressed YouTube video. But I want to dive into this and see if Nintendo did enough and maybe show you guys some evidence that is a bit clearer anyways on what we can expect when playing Tears of the Kingdom. Now, before we dive into this, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and if we somehow get there, by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we'll be giving away a Zelda Special Edition Switch OLED, a Collector's Edition of the game as well, and even one of those pins from PAX East. Oh, beyond all that, we're actually working with a couple of companies to maybe increase the prize pool a bit more so we can have some more winners. After all, I just love giving back to the community, and I'm so thankful to be where we are at already. So, look, there's a few caveats we have to have when talking about the visual presentation and the technical prowess of Tears of the Kingdom. And obviously, I want to shout out my fellow YouTube friend, Andres Restart, for first covering this topic, uh, because we might revisit some of the things that he said. But I want to get into a bit of a different angle at times on this, because I have some thoughts on the technical presentation of this game that I think ends up being more impressive than you might think on first glance. And I understand there's a lot of people sharing images of the horse and comparing it to images of the horse riding in, you know, Breath of the Wild and going, how can you tell these are even two completely different games? And a couple caveats. First off, direct sequels often look like the game before them. This is pretty much always the case. Uncharted 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, Last of Us 1, 2. Like, they look like the games before them because they're using the same visual presentation. Obviously, when you leap to new platforms, you expect that visual presentation to be increased and improved upon. And I do think we have improvements in Tears of the Kingdom. I do think that we need to take into consideration a few things. One, the footage we saw is obviously highly compressed. And when you're seeing uploads of the trailer reappear in videos such as mine like you're seeing right now or uploads of this gameplay it's being recompressed again so we're downloading an already compressed youtube file and then re-uploading it back to youtube again and compressing it further and this is before you consider the fact that we are also putting that youtube file into a video editing program that has to render that out so then you're getting triple compression on the video before you even see it what you're seeing right now so this is not representative of what you're going to see on your tv screen and we we've have plenty of evidence all over the internet that it's very very hard to get a full representation of what a game looks and feels like through a youtube video versus in real life now obviously the higher resolution we're able to capture at like if this game was in 4k and we downsampled the 1080p it can give you a pretty good feel of what 1080p would look like but we don't have that in this game, and I'm not going to downsample my video to like 480p because none of us are playing this game at 480p, so what would be the point of that? So, yeah, there is some of that at play. But what's interesting, of course, is that Nintendo released a bunch of screenshots that pretty much no one has really covered on this game on their press website, and these screenshots look much clearer, even through YouTube compression. Now, still images versus motion always tends to look a bit clearer, although when you're taking still images of in-motion stuff, that tends to be blurry. These still images look great, and you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of them as we go here because these still images are probably a better representation of what the game is going to look like. But there's some notes we have to make, of course. Obviously, we, if we're going to talk about all the YouTube compression stuff, we have to note that these could be bull shots. And what are bull shots? Essentially, this game could be running on a PC, and if it's running on a PC, then these screenshots are not indicative of what you're going to see running this natively on Switch on your TV or even on your little screen. So we do have to note that we're not really sure. Now, Nintendo tends to not misre misrepresent their games uh, as much as some other companies do, but it is notable that we can't confirm 100% that this isn't uh, like that. What we can say is that the screenshots do look like they are directly from the gameplay because you can literally pause the video and get shot-for-shot -shot comparisons. So I do think these screenshots are directly ripped from the gameplay, uh, but are they representative of the end? I don't know, but I do think they're a bit more representative of than what we saw, especially when it comes to clarity. They're clearly much clearer images 
and at full 1080p, I think might be what we expect. But when we're talking about Tears of the Kingdom from a technical perspective, we need to understand a few things, and that is that there is more to it than just the visuals. I think a lot of people focus in heavily on visual quality and just expected this game to be some sort of leaps and bounds better. Now, Switch is more powerful than a Wii U, absolutely, but I don't think anyone looks at the um, power leap from Wii U to Switch and looks like, you know, impressive. You know, you can go back and play Xenoblade Chronicles X and some of you guys might even think that looks better than Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So, I, I don't want to say that the leap is massive. From a technical perspective, it is with modern architecture, more RAM, etc. But also, the leap going from Wii U to Switch is obviously one of the smaller leaps in generations, I think, we've probably had. And because of that, I'm not really entirely sure that we should have expected the visuals to be massively better. But that doesn't mean that Nintendo hasn't taken advantage of all this extra processing power. As an example, and this one is the most obvious, when Link gets knocked off and is falling down, we're seeing draw distances that were just unimaginable in Tears of the Kingdom. We're seeing details in Sky Islands, details on the ground that are miles and miles away that we just would not have seen in Breath of the Wild. In fact, it would have just been straight up popping to see certain mountains and certain clouds and details and trees. And we can see a lot of this while Link is falling from a very long distance away. And I feel like this gives a really good representation of the draw distance increase in this game. And that, yes, takes extra processing power. You also have to consider Link's new abilities. Uh, and, and what we could do some crazy stuff with the physics system before, now we're, we're fusing things, we're moving things around, we have this ultra hand ability where if you pause at a certain part, you can see that you can literally interact with huge sections of the world and change the world and use your imagination. Who knows if you could take those sections of the world and attach them to vehicles and do crazy stuff. So there's a lot at play with the gameplay that obviously takes up some of that processing as well. But as a gamer from a technical perspective, what matters the most to me is how smooth the game plays. Look, it's pretty obvious this game is going to be 30 FPS like almost every Zelda game is. There's very few Zelda games that aren't 30 FPS. But what matters to me is that we can stay at 30 FPS. And I feel like for the most part, what we saw in the gameplay looked like a pretty smooth experience. Now, this doesn't mean that it stays at 30 FPS, there's this one point that keeps happening uh, during the shot uh, where the camera's panning around Link standing on the cube in the sky. It kind of looks like the game might be hitching a little bit or that that build of the game is hitching a little bit and it might have some slight stutter. I don't know what it is. I've seen this across multiple videos. So I do think that maybe there could still be some frame rate issues. I'm not going to sit here and pretend they don't exist. But I would say overall just watching the gameplay, watching the attacks, watching the effects... Watching everything, it does look like it's a bit smoother, and that's impressive when you consider the sheer draw distance we're being seen. Now, another thing that's quite obvious in this game is the lighting's different, and some people are will, will take or leave the lighting. Some people prefer the lighting in Breath of the Wild, of course, but the lighting in Breath of the Wild was pretty static, right? The shadows didn't really dynamically move with the sun, and it... it it, it was it was a nice lighting system that created some beautiful screenshots, but it wasn't a dynamic lighting system. And from what we can tell in the little bit of gameplay we've seen, the lighting system in Tears of the Kingdom does look to be a technical improvement. You know, we're seeing that the shadows are moving depending on the position of the sun. And that is something that we just didn't have happen in Breath of the Wild. So I'm really excited about that. Also, the shadows themselves just look a bit clearer, a bit crisper uh, we've noticed this in prior trailers as well that the shadows and the lighting just look better and i think it's become even more evident especially when you compare the games side by side now beyond that from a technical perspective i do think there's other things that we should note and have been noted before the clouds in this game the clouds in this game were obviously next level in comparison to anything we saw in breath of the wild granted we didn't need the clouds to be next level but in Breath of the Wild, because we weren't really meant to be up in the sky, but, like, the, the clouds, obviously, you know, are fooling people, and are they volumetric, and I don't really care if they're volumetric or not, I, you know, I don't know if we have a final determination, I think it's just a clever use of a bunch of 2D textures, uh, but just done in a really brilliant way with some clever tricks, which, by the way, there's clever tricks in a lot of games visually, 
I, I do think the clouds are obviously pretty impressive, though, and I like how they're handled, and clearly that's going to take some extra processing as well. So from a technical perspective, I would say there are several things that are really nice to have in Tears of the Kingdom that maybe we're taking a bit for granted, and obviously some of this has to do with the clarity of the footage potentially being affected through compression, because even from Nintendo's side, right, you, they have to direct core to the footage, and let's, let's assume they got the absolute best direct recordings of the footage ever, which is why they can rip these high-quality screenshots, but then they have to put it through an editor, right, to clip everything together. That's going to add some compression. Then they upload to YouTube, which adds a layer of compression. Then you have us downloading it, which is more compression, and then you have to put it back through an editor. In fact, so, like, it, the footage is just being ultra-compressed by the time you guys are seeing it, So, and everyone knows this. This is just how video works. So, I will say that I think it's a pretty technically impressive feat, uh, so far from Tears of the Kingdom, at least in comparison to Breath of the Wild. Now, is it going to blow your socks off and make you feel like it's so, like uh, this massive fundamental improvement? No, and I think I think that's something where if that's what you expected, you probably wish this game would have went to Switch 2 and been a Switch 2 only game because obviously Switch 2 would represent a massive leap compared to Wii U, and then you could start to expect a lot more details, right? You'd probably end up with an upscaled 4K image. You might even be talking about a 60 FPS game versus a 30 FPS game. You would also be talking about even higher quality textures appearing in the world, and yeah, maybe even some other fine details. One last aspect I want to bring up, and this is just something I noticed when comparison horses horses running next to each other, uh, because it's hard to do one to one comparison with Link's hair because Link's hair is down in this game and it's not as down in Breath of the Wild, is the hair physics seem to be a bit more um, a, a bit more there. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of turning hair works on in The Witcher Three, right? You turn hair works on and the hair is going all nuts and crazy like it actually would in a true uh, physical environment. And it, that looks like that's what's happening in this footage as well. Again, it's a small thing that I don't think most people are going to notice, but I do think it's a technical improvement over Breath of the Wild. But in the end, obviously, if you're impressed with these improvements, it's going to be up to the eye of the beholder. Uh, there's plenty more we could dive into. I, I just kind of feel like we uh, maybe some people are being a bit too harsh on Tears of the Kingdom, and maybe some people are praising it a bit too much when it comes to the visual perspective. One thing is clear, it is a technical improvement, and I don't think that that is deniable at this point. There are some things that that maybe, uh, you know, y you wish would go away. Like, there was this thing about the Wild where they had this rendering line you could see about six feet in front of you. That kind of looks like it's still present. I, I don't know that we have a great confirmation of it, but it, it looks like there might still be that little six foot in front of you rendering line. Uh, which just makes things a bit clearer. It, it, it's interesting. It's hard to tell with compressed footage, but it does look like that might still be there. We'll, we'll, we'll know more once we actually get more gameplay to confirm. But I also will note that objects aren't popping in um, as close to you as they used to. We used to have grass popping in like 10 feet, 15 feet in front of us. Now it appears we can see much further out. And because of that, well, there is pop-in. If you're looking for pop-in, you're going to find it. Which, by the way, there's pop-in in almost every video game in the planet, even on PlayStation 5. So if you're going to look for the pop-in, you will find pop-in. It's just much further away. And because it's much further away, it just makes the world more believable. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about Tears of the Kingdom and its technical prowess in comparison to Breath of the Wild so far down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance, and I'll catch you in that next video.